Hi everyone and welcome to my live creative time today. My name's Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Thank you all so much for being here today, whether or not you are joining me live or watching the replay here on Facebook or over on YouTube. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to have you here. So while everybody is jumping on, I will just bring this up on my other devices so that I can see all of your comments there. So bear with me one moment while I just do that. Okay, so iPad is happy. And let's hope that my laptop is happy today too, because last week my um, video kept disappearing. Well, actually that might've been on Thursday when I was on um, YouTube. So um, let's just, I'll just bring this up. There we go, okay. Cool. All right, all is happy. I can see comments, well, when comments come through. So if you're joining me, say hi. Um, if you, this is your first time joining me, let me know where you're watching from. We always love to welcome new friends. Um, and I've got some really cool product to share with you today, brand new from the new annual catalog and um, haven't used it yet. So today is the first time I'm gonna be using it with you. So I'm super excited about that. Um, so we're gonna have a little bit of a play. But how was everybody's Mother's Day yesterday? Let me know in the comments um, as you're jumping on um, and let me know what you did for Mother's Day and if you did something special or if you just had a quiet day or what you did. So I had a fairly quiet day yesterday. It was just Amber and I here for most of the day. Um, my husband and son had gone up to see my mother-in-law um, for Mother's Day and so and of course our other daughter is in Queensland so yeah so it was just Amber and I and so we just had a sleep in and then I made some scones you might have seen me post about that using my mum's um, famous scone recipe and then we just watched a movie yeah so that was about it so it's just a quiet a quiet little afternoon evening and uh, until the boys got home so yeah so that was it so nice and relaxing didn't really do much um yeah and saturday what did i do on saturday i think i was just working on saturday just yeah doing catching up on the week of things so yeah so that's about it but let me know how was your mother's day i hope you all had a lovely day um and did something special with your families so let me know. So um, Amber made me a beautiful Mother's Day card and I've got it here to share with you today. So let me bring that out. Oh. So, and I forgot to check um, the names of the products that she used, but I can look up on my shelf. Oh, actually, she's here with us, I think. I think she's here. Is she on yet? Amber, are you here yet? Amber can maybe let us know the um, products that she used. But this is the beautiful card that Amber made for me for Mother's Day. Isn't that just gorgeous? So I think this is the So Much, I think it's called the So Much Love stamp set and it has coordinating dies. Um, and this one here, I don't know, I can't remember if that's from the same set or not. Um, if Amber's in the comments, maybe she can let us know. But let me have a look up on my stamp shelf up here because the stamp set's up there somewhere. Um, yes. Here it is here. It's this one here, Love For You. So that's the one that she used and it has coordinating dies. So isn't that just beautiful? I love the colors and that, that gold on there as well. So pretty, isn't that gorgeous? I love it. And she's done all the distressing cause she knows I love distressing. Um, and the tearing of the vellum and yeah, so just really beautiful. And in the background, she used um, one of the brand new, I'm not sure if you can see it there. See the background here? That's a new embossing folder from the new annual catalog and I've got it right here. It's, I haven't even used it yet. So she used it before me. <laughs> Usually the rule is I get to use everything first because they're my products. I bought them and it's my business. <laughs> 
them first. No, sometimes I do let her use them first, but um, but she snuck in with this one without me knowing. Um, this is it here. It's beautiful. I forget what it's called, actually. Exposed Brick 3D Embossing Folder. And I left that one out today because I thought we might even use that with our project today. Um, it's really cool. It's got like a, a brick texture. It's also got sort of like some font built into it too. Kind of looks... It reminds me of like a house that has been rendered, but then the rendering is breaking down and um, and it's exposing the bricks. That's kind of what it, it's hard, it's hard to tell on the um, the cover there, but uh, we'll have a closer look at that later. But yeah, so she used that one in the background and um, and then I think, did she ink over the top? Yeah, she's inked over the top of it as well, I think, to bring out the detail a little bit. <laughs> she says, Amber says, yes, 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 you should use that embossing folder. It's so nice. Yeah, she really likes that one. So, yeah, so I loved my card and uh, I'll be putting that up on my little display shelf up there behind me. Some of those cards have been on display for a while, so I'll probably take some of those ones down and replace it with um, with this one. So I'll pop that over there. And, um, yeah, so, all right, let me catch up on some of these comments. Hey Glenda, how are you? Glenda says, hi Mandy, my daughter and I went to the movies and had lunch together. Oh, very nice. That sounds like a really lovely day, Glenda. Hi Julie, how you going? Great to have you here. Hi Rose, how are you? Great to have you here. Um, Rose says, hi Mandy, had a lovely Mother's Day. Most of the family came for lunch, which they brought with them. Oh, that's good. That's good when you don't have to do the cooking. That's awesome. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Hey, Sam, how are you? Great to have you with us today. Um, oh, thank you so much for sharing, Sam. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, oh, there you go, Amber. Rose said, beautiful card, Amber. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it is a beautiful card. Um, so today we're going to, as I said, we're going to be using some brand new product. We're going to be using the Earthen Elegance Suite today. Um, I'll share that with you and show you more about that in a moment. But before I jump onto that, let me just remind you that I have got a class coming up using the Zoo Crew um, Suite, which I was using last week in my in my live creative times as well. Um, and this one, the registration closes tomorrow. So Tuesday, the 16th of May. So if you would like to get in on this one, check that out. The details will be in the description of this video. Um, I'll pop it up here in the comments as well so that you can grab it right now if you'd like to. You can go there, you can click on the link and just have a, have a read, have a look to see what's included in the class and see if that might be something that you might like to join in on. There's six beautiful projects in this class and oh my goodness, they're so fun and so cute and adorable. Um, you'll love them. But yeah, six different projects. Plus, then last week I created two more, or three more actually. So on Monday, I did this one. I've still got in the, the baggie, so it might reflect the light a little bit. Now let me take it out of the baggie. I did this one last Monday. So you might have seen that one. Really cute with that little goat. And I used the layout that I had used in um, my team mystery stamping in the team gathering that um, I held on last Saturday. And then on Thursday on my YouTube live, I created two card. Well, I created this card first. I'm not sure if you saw this one yet. Super cute with the little um, crocodile. And this one was inspired by a card that I made for my husband for our anniversary, believe it or not, 17 years ago um, with that tag and the the blocks of dsp with the tag so i changed it up and included the little crocodile but then i went on to make this one which was um the same layout as this but without using the details on the tag i changed the tag portion up and created a little scene on there um using the um zoo crew die stamps and dies so that one was really fun. I love that one. Um, but I didn't make this up into a card. I just did the tag on this one because I was running out of time. So I just did the tag on this one on Thursday. And then when I finished my live, then I did the whole, the base card as well and added that on. So they are three 
additional projects using the Zoo Crew. Um, and so if you are part of my Zoo Crew card class, you'll have enough supplies to be able to create these cards as well if you would like to. So that will be nine projects. And these ones have got video tutorials because I did those on my lives last week. So check that out. I'm going to pop the link now up in the, um, the comments. So let me just grab that link. That's what I was doing. I got sidetracked talking about my cards. <laughs> there we go. All right. So yeah, so registration and payment needs to be um, done by the end of tomorrow to be included in this class. So check that one out. All righty. Pop that over there out of the way. Oh, and that stamp set too. Don't need that. Okay, so let me just check back on comments here. And if you see me looking over to the side, it's because that's where my laptop is. And um, so I can see your comments much more easily over there than on my iPad. I can see them on my iPad, but they disappear. So it's easier for me just to look over there on the computer. Um, oh, Sam loves your card too, Amber. That's lovely. Yeah. Glenda loves your card also. <laughs> oh, Janelle's here too. Hi, Janelle. How are you going? Great to have you here. Um, Sam says uh, she can't join, can't join in on the class this time. Oh, you're getting the sweet for your birthday though. Lovely. That'll be very nice. Yeah. Um, Julie said they are so cute. Is that tag a punch topper? Oh, so to create the tag, I actually used the very best trio punch. So I cut my own tag to size. It was six by 12 centimeters. And then I used the um, very best trio, there's the name of it, the very best trio punch to do the, the top of the tag. So yeah, but that was my, um, the original one was my own design. Excuse my face up really close. I was just reaching over to my shelf where my where my punches live, which is right eye level with me actually. Here on my um, I have a shelf on um, on the wall in front of my desk. Uh, yeah. So oh, you catch the replay, Sam. No worries. Thank you. We'll catch you later. All right. Well, if you um, if you love any of the products that I am sharing with you today, you can get a hold of them too because they are all available in the new annual catalog. Now, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Australia that you are working with, then I would love to be your demonstrator and I would be happy to send you out a catalog. So if you would love one of these brand new catalogs, um, then please uh, complete my catalog request form and I'll be happy to send one out to you. Um, that will be in the de description of this video as well, but I will also put it in the comments for anyone who might be jumping on live with us today. So pop that there in the comments for you as well. Um, so yeah, so this beautiful catalog is so full of gorgeous, gorgeous products. All of our brand new colors as well as our returning colors, carrying over colors. Um, ink pads and markers and oh um, everything everything in the whole color range <laughs> is available in this catalog um, so you need to check it out all the ribbons and bling and stamp sets and dies and punches and tools and all your standard tools as well now as well as that remember too that in our online store there's also some online exclusive products as well that you won't find in the catalog and also the kits as well you'll find all of those in the online store now if you are looking for my online store um, you can go to my blog which is mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com and then you click on the shop button and that'll take you straight through to my online store um, you can also get to it via my website as well and there's different things on both of those platforms so feel free to check both of those out and if you are shopping with me um, remember to use my host code um, there's my uh, what month are we may <laughs> my may 2023 host code and when your order is over 73 uh, sorry 75 dollars you'll receive um, a thank you gift from me but i actually have an additional thank you gift for the month of may 
for every order of every size of every um, no matter how much it, it is um, which is a free card kit to make um, the card which I have put away over in my tub over there hang on I'll scoot on over I forgot to leave it this one out so this one here so you get a card kit to make this card um, you'll get all of the pieces are ready to put the card together the only thing you'll need to do is to stamp your sentiment because we're we are not allowed to um, include stamped sentiments in our kits um, so you'll just stamp your sentiment and if you don't have this bundle then you can use whatever stamp you like um, but all the other pieces will be there in the kit for you so that is a, an extra free gift for the month of May for my customers Alrighty. Well, how about we, um, oh, the other thing is too, one thing I, I have been, um, forgetting to mention, well, I have been mentioning it, but it's been a little bit of an afterthought because I'm so excited by all the new products. I just want to get in and get crafting, but I must let you know as well that, um, if you love these products and you have a big wish list, then, um, please consider joining Stampin' Up because you will get the best value that way. Um, now, Obviously, you don't have to. It's your choice, but I'm just giving you the options. Uh, it is $169 to purchase the starter kit, but for that starter kit, you get to choose what you would like to put in it up to the value of $235. So you're actually getting $66 worth of free product, plus you'll get free shipping on that starter kit order as well. Um, and then you'll get an ongoing 20 to 25% discount on your products. So, and not only that, you'd be joining our team and um, it's a beautiful team. We have so much fun together. We do lots of things together. Um, we have a monthly event together and, um, you know, if you're not able to join, that's okay. I do record it. Um, and we, we have a team retreat coming up in August, which will be a full day in-person retreat, which will be super fun. So we're in the planning process of that at the moment. Um, we have a, a group, a Facebook group just for our team. So we share our inspiration with each other. I do a monthly team creative challenge as well and I award a prize for that. Um, we have team recognitions and all sorts of things. There's so much that, that is involved. And also too, then you get to have the opportunity to join in all of the Stampin' Up! demonstrator only events. Um, we get catalogs early, we get to order new product early and all sorts of things. So there's so many benefits of joining Stampin' Up! So if you'd like more information about that, then please get in contact with me. Um, or if you've already made the decision, I do have a join button on my blog and also on my website. So if you go to either of those, you'll see the, see the, um, the join button there and um, you can click on those for more information. But if you have questions, please feel free to get in contact with me. And I'd love to answer those questions for you so that you can make an informed decision um, if joining is the right, the right thing for you. Um, but of course, we would love to welcome you. All right. Um, Okie dokie. All right. So that is about that. Um, and the beautiful new catalog. Now I'm going to leave that out because I'm going to show you where to find the products that we're playing with today. And I got a, you might have seen, I did a quick reel um, towards the end of last week. I can't remember what day it was, but I got another BBB, which is a big brown box, which is the box that our deliveries come in. Um, so I got a whole heap of new product and some of those we're playing with today. Um, and there's a few additional things I left out just to show you as well. So I'm going to tip the camera down now to the desktop so that we can get started and um, I can share all of these with you. So I just cover up the camera so I don't make you dizzy while I'm doing all the transition. So here we go. Bear with me for one moment. And we will flip. Now, did that flip that way? We'll find out in a minute. <laughs> Sometimes if I don't tap it hard enough, it doesn't always flip. Um, I need to undo this one too. Oh, I've done this one up very tightly. Okay, hang on a sec. Oh, oh, got it. Wow, that one was so tight. I could barely get that undone that time. Okay. All right, here we go. 
we go. So let's see. We'll see if that flipped. Oh, it did. Oh, good. Okay, I wasn't sure. But it all looks okay. Now let me just line this up. Let's try and line that up a little bit better. All right, we'll move that keyboard because we don't need that now. And there you go. All right, lights down on the desk. Oh, and one thing I didn't do was move my camera down closer to the desk. So let's do that. How is that? Is that close enough? Oh, just did that up tight and that hurt my hand. Okie dokie. So it takes a little moment just to get the, because um, I'm only working with one camera. I know some people work with two cameras, so they have one already set up down on their desk and one forward facing, but I only have one camera. So I have to do the transition. So I'll just check to see, well, that looks pretty straight. So that's good. And we'll just pop this up here so that I can find the center. I'm going to use my grid paper today so that I can, um, Find the center and make sure I work on the on the uh, the grid paper because I found on I think it was on Thursday I kept going off the <laughs> off the page. Um, all right, there we go. So we are all set up. Here is our beautiful new catalog, and today the focus of our project is going to be the beautiful Earthen Elegance Suite. If you haven't seen this one, oh my goodness, you need to check it out. It is beautiful. Now, I love all things distressing. So most of you who watch me regularly will already know that. Hi, Martha. Great to see you. Thank you for jumping in. Um, and this is just so me. It's just very um, textured. The papers are very textured. The stamps are textured. Very earthy colors. Um, you know, nature inspired with the um, the earthenware and the, you know, the foliage. Yeah, just gorgeous. The dyes are amazing. Um, so I'm going to show you all of those. And we're going to create um, a card based on the samples here. So I haven't actually already designed one because it was Mother's Day yesterday. And Sunday's usually my day off, but usually I plan something that evening for the next day. Um, but of course, I took the day off yesterday. So I just thought, well, we're going to case the caddy today. Um, but we might change it up a little bit too. So let's have a look. I'm going to keep this open. Let's have a look at the products. So we have got, here's a close-up of the stamp set. Now it's a cling stamp set, so that's the red rubber. Okay, I've put all my stickers on them. I did that today before we went live because it was a bit of an afterthought. I, thought I went to open the stamps to have a look at them and thought, oh, goodness, I better quickly put the, all the um, stickers on them. And then these are the dies. So these are the earthen texture dies. So they have the same name as the stamp set, which is great. Um, all of the new bundles are now named the same as the stamp sets are named the same as the dies, which is very helpful to be able to, um, you know, find things and match them up. These dies are amazing. So we've got an embossing die and you just use the normal plates that you would use if you're die cutting. Um, but this one is a an actual embossing die. So I did do a little a sample of that one just to show you. This was one of the tags I didn't use on my card last week. Um, but can you see that it's sort of debossed? So it's impressed down into the cardstock, but it gives a really nice texture. It's really, really great. And actually, if you ran a bit of ink over the top of that, it'll make that stand out even more. It doesn't emboss as deeply as our embossing folders. So if you turn over, you don't see it. Like there's a little bit of a mark there, but you don't see the detail on the other side as much. So it's meant to be displayed that way so that it's debossed into the cardstock. So I love that. Then we've got um, each of these stamps set, each of these stamps, sorry, have a coordinating die. And then we've got additional dies as well. So we've got this leaf, this leaf, we've got some stems. Um, we've got the to this little top bit with the handles, um, which is extra to, for um, that pot. 
and we've got this little detail here too. So I die cut some of those additional pieces just to show you what they are like. So this is the little um, cross hatch. <laughs> Amber said it looks like in Roman numerals 20. <laughs> But I guess if you had lots of them, you could make sort of like a fence or a um, a railing or just a really cool sort of um, little texture, sort of like a little Aztec-y type texture. Um, and then this is, so I've cut all of these out of crumb cake. Um, this is this one here. So that's really cool. And then I did, I stamped um, this tall pot which is this one here, and I die cut that. So I stamped um, copper clay onto crumb cake, and I really like that look. It gave like a real rusty sort of look to it. Um, so I really love that. And then this one here, I wanted to show you this one. Um, so that's this one here. When you die cut this one, you'll notice that it's got these grooves on the leaves. And each of the leaves is actually attached by a little, just a little piece of cardstock there, like in between that joins each of the leaves. But what you can do is, so you can use it just like that, or what you can do is you can just snip each of those little sections, which takes you down to where the die cutting is. And that'll separate each of those leaves. Okay, so now each of those leaves are individual and you can shape this however you like. Now, because you've got these little grooves in there, they mean that what you can do is you can bend those in to give the leaf a little bit more texture so that it's shaped. So you can do that with each of the leaves. Now, if you didn't snip in between each of the um, those sort of um, fronds, those, let's say palm fronds, because it looks a bit like a palm, um, you wouldn't probably be able to shape it in this way. would make it a little bit more difficult. But as I said, this is just an extra step if you wanted to, but you can just leave it um, flat. But I like things textured, of course, so I'm always going to probably do it this way. So just pinch it in gently. You'll notice that I'm just pushing my, my nail just in the center just to help it to get started. And there you go. And then you've got a really beautiful textured leaf. And it actually looks like a palm frond wood because they have, you know, they sort of fold up like that. So isn't that cool? So there you go. So now we have texture in that, in that die. So there's just some little samples, and as I said, I didn't um, stamp all of, I didn't stamp all of these because we'll use those in our project today. But I just wanted to stamp one and die cut it um, just to see what it looked like. Now, interestingly, with these dies that cut out these um, pots, um, and I'm not so sure about these ones yet because I haven't used those, but I know definitely with the pots because I saw somebody else ask this question. And it was answered by one of the um, one of the designers, the Stampin' Up designers. Um, the dies that cut the pots, they cut just inside the stamped line. So if you go to die cut your pot and you think, oh no, it's cut off part of the pot, it's actually meant to, to do that. It's meant to cut inside the line so that you don't have a white edge around the edge. You'll notice that with most of the Stampin' Up dies, when you die cut them, um, if it's a stamped image that you're die cutting, you have a white edge around them. These pots do not have that. So if you notice this pot here, um, it, it doesn't have that edge around it. It's cut all the design out right to the, yeah. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but I really love that. So that's super awesome. Alrighty. Okay, so let's have a look at the beautiful designer series paper. So that's the stamps and the dies. So we spent a little bit of time looking at those and, and how they work. Um, the DSP or designer series paper. Now I've just got a quarter pack left because of my paper share. So I participated in my own paper share. So I got a quarter pack of all of the papers. But usually you'll get this in a 12 by 12 um inch piece okay so this is only a quarter of a pack so this is this is actually half a sheet 
of each of the papers, okay? Um, so the colors in here are Copper Clay, Grey Granite, Misty Moonlight, Moody Mauve, Pebbled Par, Pecan Pie, and Pretty Peacock. So we've got some really beautiful colors in, in this one. I love this piece. I think this is my favorite piece. Um, with the, the pottery, it looks like the glaze has dripped down on the pottery. Just beautiful, beautiful. This one here reminds me of the ocean, or it could be sky. You could, you could use it however you like. I'll just show you the one side of them first and then I'll flip them over. I love all the textures in these. They just really look 3D, um, but they're, they're not. They're paper, but obviously they have been created. It's been like pottery that's been photographed or something, I would say. Um, I'd love to see how they made this paper because it's really beautiful. This one here has got some detail that goes this way. It looks like it's been imprinted into the clay. And I love the Moody Mauve. So it's, it's, I think it's my favorite in color is the Moody Mauve. And then this one, look how cool this paper is. Doesn't that look like it's actually impressed and imprinted into the paper? It looks like it would be so textured, this paper, but it's actually a flat design. Um, it's just so amazing how they made this paper look like that. In fact, years ago, I had a paper that looked similar to this. It was like um, a type of sort of mulberry paper and it had a similar texture to that, but it was actually textured. This isn't, this is completely flat. So I love this one too. I think this is my other favorite one. So let's have a look on the other side. We've got some beautiful um, uh, Misty, is that Misty Moonlight? Yep, Misty Moonlight. We've got some Pebble Path design there. I love this one. Isn't that just so gorgeous? That's the uh, Pretty Peacock. Some more blues. How beautiful is this one? How gorgeous would that look? Just that, that portion there on a card with a bit of twine, sentiment, some bling, done. Isn't that just so gorgeous? And then this one has got a very different um, pattern on it as well, which is really colorful. Um, they're sort of like muted soft colors, but they like earthy colors, but they're really awesome. So yeah, so there you go. So there's the papers. So that's what we're going to be playing with today. And as I said, I've only got at the moment a quarter pack of this pack of papers. So I know that I'm going to be ordering more of this. In fact, I've already started my next order. Um, it's saved at the moment in my cart and I'm ordering some more of this because <laughs> I just love it. It's beautiful. All right, so they are the products that come in the suite. So you've got the, the, um, oh, the stamps, the dies, the paper, and there is one other product. It's the ribbon. So this ribbon is called, well, it's more trim than ribbon, really. It's natural wavy trim. So it's like, it's like our linen thread that has been woven into this beautiful um, design. I really love this. It reminds me of the old macrame. Do you remember macrame? Or I think in America they call it macrame. Um, yeah, that's what it reminds me of. Very textured. Just, I really love it. It's really beautiful. So that's the uh, the fourth product in the suite. Okay, so we've got those. So the DSP, the ribbon, the stamp set, and the... Um, dies now all of those products can be purchased individually or you can purchase them together as a sweet collection so i'll just show you here in the catalog okay so you've you've got them all listed separately um you can see them all listed separately over here on page 70 but if you want all of the products there is one code there which will get you the entire um the entire sweet collection of all of those products that I just showed you. Okay, now if you're buying the stamp sets, you'll want those beautiful dies. So if you buy them together as a stamp and die bundle, you'll save 10%. So if you don't want the paper, you don't want the ribbon, but why wouldn't you? Um, then you can just get the stamps and dies together and save yourself 10% when you purchase them as a bundle. If you purchase the sweet collection, that bundle price is built into that sweet collection price. Okay, just so that you know that. Alrighty, now a couple of other things I wanted to show you before we get crafting is we have some other awesome new products 
that we may use today. I'm not sure yet, but I pulled them out just in case. So we've got the 2023 to 2025 in color jute trim. This is gorgeous, stunning trim. It's a thick, it's like the linen thread, but it's thicker, like a jute. Um, or what did, what else did we used to call the jute? Um, there was another name for it. It's like, like a thick, coarse string. Um, so that's in the in colors, and some of these colors coordinate beautifully with this suite. So, well, they're in the suite. They're in the DSP. So I pulled that out as well, because also with this, when you have this this jute, because it is so thick, what you can actually do is you can untwist the fibers from the jute and you can use them as individual fibers as well. So you can use it all together or you can untwist them and use the individual fibers. Excuse my very dry hands. <laughs> I always struggle with dry hands, especially in the winter. Um, so yeah, so I really love that. That's really awesome. So I thought, well, I'll pull that out today. Um, they did use that in one of the um, projects in the catalog. So I thought, well, I'll pull that out. We might use that. Um, this is the exposed brick 3D embossing folder that I talked about at the beginning um, that Amber used on my Mother's Day card. But I'll show you the detail. Whoops. So if I open that up, can you see all the detail on there? Actually, you probably can't see it as well if I put it on the table. So that's got lots and lots of beautiful um, detail on there. I really love that. I think this is going to be my new favourite. Um, also, too, I wanted to show you, um, I got the new set of um, the new core colours in the Stamp and Write markers. So we, um, oh, hey, Dimity. Hi, Fee. Great to have you here. Um, so we had with the color refresh or with the new catalog, we had a color refresh. So some of the old colors went away and we had some new brand new colors come in. Plus we had some returning colors that have were previous in colors. So these are all of the new colors that are in the, um, the color refresh or the, as they're calling them, the core colors. So they're going into the core colors like your, um, regals, subtles, brights, um, and what's the other one I've forgotten? Regal, subtles, brights, neutrals. Yeah. Um, so you can actually purchase them just as the, the new core kit colors. Okay. Or new core colors. Sorry, not kit colors. Um, so if you're looking for those, I'll give you the code if you want to grab a pen. And I'll give you the code. Um, it's 161694. 161694. Okay, so I just thought I'd pull those out as well in case we use those today because um, I just wasn't sure. And a couple of other products that I've got that I wanted to show you as well. I got these beautiful colors, are uh, these beautiful um, specialty papers, and I left these out because these have some of the colors in this designer series paper that we're using today. And I thought mm, I'll just keep them out in case we use them. So this is the Soft Shimmer 12 by 12 specialty paper. I did have these out earlier and I should have shown you. Obviously the pink isn't in there, um, but I will tell you the colours, um, which I should have grabbed the colours from the, the back of the pack while I was over there. But we've got the, um, the Pretty Peacock is in here. So I thought, well, the Pretty Peacock is gorgeous. I mean, I love all of these colours, but the Pretty Peacock's in... The DSP that we're using today, but we have got. Oops, let me see the colours. We've got Berry Burst, Bubble Bath, Lost Lagoon, Night of Navy, and Pretty Peacock. So there you go. Aren't they gorgeous? Really, really pretty. And they're just on printed on, or not printed, but they have the design on one side, the glimmer. And this doesn't come off. Like it's not like a glitter that comes off. It's actually, yeah, doesn't come off at all. So it's really great paper. So I kept that out. And then there's also the 2023 to 2025 in color luster specialty paper in boho blue, copper clay, moody mauve, pebble path and wild wheat. So some of these colors are also in the designer series paper that we're using today. So I thought I would keep this out as well. 
And so that's what this looks like. Whoops, hang on a sec. Let me grab that. So there's our boho. There's our boho. There's our copper clay. So copper clay is in what we're using today. So this is more, this has more of a shimmer to it, whereas the other paper has more of a glitter look to it. So this has got like a very fine, almost, almost glitter, but not quite. It's like a shimmer. Um, and there's the wild wheat, which looks really gold, actually. So we've got these three colours, the copper clay, the moody mauve, and the pebbled path is in the DSP we're using today. So I thought, oh, I'll keep those out too, because they're really nice. And it's hard to catch them on camera under the lights, but they do have a real sort of luster and shimmer to them really pretty paper so there you go um and these ones actually are double-sided oh there you go i didn't realize that they are double-sided so they have the shimmer on both sides which is awesome so there you go all right so that's all my show and tell um so we should get started and create a card all right now let's pull out the catalog again and I did also grab out some cardstock. So these, these ones here are the colors that are in the designer series paper, okay? And then I pulled out some white, some very vanilla, and some crumb cake, because I wasn't sure which one we were gonna use with them. So I thought, well, I'll just pull them all out. But aren't those colors just gorgeous? So beautiful. And I've pulled, you'll notice I've pulled out a few um, scrappy bits as well, so that we can use those up too. So, all right, so looking at the catalog, I was deciding which one I wanted to, to do, and I, I love them all. So it's really hard to choose which one um, to sort of play with, but we might even end up, you know, doing our own anyway. Um, so this one is a parcel or a, or a gift that is wrapped, but you could turn that into a card. Um, this one's a smaller, this one looks like it's a bit of a smaller card. Um, these two are standard size cards. So, um, yeah, so I think we'll just start playing around and we'll see what we come up with. All right. So I really liked, I'll pop this, I'll pop these down for a moment. I really liked what I started with here with this pot that looks sort of like a you know earthenware pot um and i really like this piece in the um crumb cake as well um so we could start kind of there and let's bring in let's put some stamps on some blocks first that would be very helpful and then we can stamp some of these um stamps so we've got that one already we'll stamp some of the leafy images now i just have to see which block these are going to fit on uh, yeah i think that'll just just fit on that one so what is that that's a an h block and then i think this one will need the bigger block which is an i block in fact if we put one on this side and we'll put the other one on the other side then we can stamp both Okay, and then sentiments, we'll decide on sentiments a little bit later, I think. A little bit later down the track. All right, so we'll stamp some of these. Now, we probably should decide on what color DSP or which DSP we're gonna use first, and then we can decide on what color um, stamped images we're going to use. So I'll put these over to the side. Not sure if I'm gonna use this one yet, but we'll keep that one out anyway. All right, so let's see. Well, I really love this one. So how about I pick out my favorites? Love that one. Love that one. And one of them over the back, love that one. Okay, so they're my, they're my favorites. Oh, I love that one too. So these ones are my favorites. This one, this one I think I want to just have on its own with just a sentiment perhaps. Um, so I might not use that one today. Oh, there was one that I really liked actually 
Oh, there's another. There's some other products I forgot to show you. Uh, where is it? This one here. I think I want to do one of the pots in this to have it look look like a bit of a um, patina effect on the the pot. Do you all know what patina is? It's when um, metal oxidizes and you get that greeny sort of tone. So the other new product that I have is the metallic enamel basic. Uh, sorry, meta metallic enamel effects basics. That's a big mouthful, isn't it? So these um these come in three colours. So we've got silver, gold, and copper. And I just thought that perhaps using some of that on this might also be great. But I wanted to have a little play with that. So I might have a little play with you all. And to do that, I'm going to need a silicon craft sheet, which needs a wash. <laughs> Hang on. One of these I did wash. I've had it sitting up on my shelf. It's probably gotten a bit dusty again. I'll use this one. And I was going to grab a craft sponge. I've put, I've packed away all of my um, paint brushes. Um, they're all out in the garage, and I meant to grab them out of my craft cupboard out there in my garage, which is my overflow supply out there. Um, but I forgot. But I've got craft sponges, so I'll grab one of those. So these craft sponges are sponges that Stampin' Up! used to sell. They don't sell them anymore, but you can get craft sponges from um, your local craft supply stores. So, but unfortunately... Whoa, hang on a minute. Oh, it's all right. I was just having an avalanche of products over there on the other desk, which I hadn't realised. <laughs> um, so I might grab a, a bigger pair of scissors and I'll just cut this into quarters. So we'll have a little a little play. I used to um, have a whole well actually I still do have them somewhere. A whole heap of these sponges already cut and I used to do a lot of sponging techniques with these sponges. I don't do that so much now because Stampin' Up doesn't sell these sponges anymore. So it makes it difficult when um, you know you have to sort of tell people to go out and source them and try and find them somewhere so I tend not to use them as much these days but you might have something in your stash that you can use um, in a similar way so anyway, I'm going to pop that aside because I'll just have that ready because I want to do a little bit of something with this and I'm just thinking all right so I think I want to use this for a pot this for a pot and maybe this one for the background so let's cut a piece of this one. Um, what I like to do with my designer series paper is because I've got um, three. So this one, this one's kind of directional actually. So maybe I wonder. Yeah, I might have to cut this a different way. Normally what I do is I cut this in three pieces. So I'll cut each section in at four inches. But because this is kind of a directional um, design, it might not work. So if I put it that way, oh, it might still be all right on the side. Let's see. So I'll cut this at um, three fours of 12. So we want four inches is that right four inches and then we'll get three out of that yes that's right four inches okay i normally work in centimeters but because the paper is 12 inches um i'm just working in inches just for that so that's 10.15 centimeters all right so then yeah i think that will look all right on its side won't it because i want to do a um portrait style card not a landscape I want my pots tall. All right, so we've got that piece. Um, now for the others, I might just, I'll cut little bits, I think. So I don't want to waste it because I haven't got much of this paper. All 
all right so because we're using this as the texture today I probably won't use the embossing folder I don't think um, yeah we'll see maybe I maybe I will we'll see all right so base card let's have a look at our base colors um, we could go pebbled path perhaps no we're gonna lose it we could go all right let's have a look and see what's on here oh I think maybe vanilla vanilla we go vanilla or we could go crumb cake crumb cake might be good too oh yes I like it on crumb cake all right let's do a crumb cake base all right so for the base um let's get rid of that one for the base um this is just half a sheet of a4 cardstock <laughs> hi deborah how are you going um deborah said sounds like you are trying to trying to pick your favorite child <laughs> I know all the papers are so beautiful it's hard to pick which one to use they're all so gorgeous um Amber said I can see this sweet making beautiful gift tags oh yes I agree yes 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 um so all right so this piece is just half an A4 piece so it's 21 centimeters by 14.85 um, I'm just going to score this at 10.5 using my scoring blade, which is the light colored blade. So just score that a few times. Okay, and then I'm going to push it up against this ledge here and this little ledge here. Push it up there in the corner and then fold that over. Make sure I get all of my sides lined up nicely and then I'll use my bone folder to just burnish that crease there okay and then we get it lined up beautifully all right so we've got that piece we've got our layer then we're going to need now let's have a look what have they got in the catalog okay then they have another piece behind that I mean on top of that and we'll need to trim this down of course um, in fact I'm very tempted to tear this very tempted but we will see let's just see uh, I want to do a pot out of this all right so maybe we should do we'll, okay we've got a starting point maybe what we should do is we'll make some of the pots and I wanted to play with that um, idea that I had because I'm not sure if that's going to dry in time either so we'll see all right um, so we've got this tall pot already that I stamped so we've got that one it is going to need something to lift that off it is going to need something to lift that off that background so we'll have to put another color there um, but I wanted to do another pot in this one um, hmm but I also wanted to use this one well, let's put that away because we've used that and I have got so much going on on my desk here it is crazy <laughs> Messy, messy, messy. That's okay. I tidy it up after each time I craft, so it's all good. All right. Um, pots. Which pots? So we've got the two tall ones. We could do. Could we do two tall ones? I reckon we could do two tall ones, and then a small one. So I like this pot with. I wanted some of this at the top of the pot but then we've got this little bit too which is for the handles so um how do they do this one so they put that on top like that with the handles but we can have that in oh or we could just have the pot just on its own without handles or we could add the handles to the back and have the hand yeah that we could do that all right, so I might just cut the pot out of this piece, but I'm just finding which piece of the drip I like. Oh, I like it over this side. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to cut my paper. Now, don't freak out. I am going to hack into my paper. Amber, close your eyes. 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut a small section of the paper there just enough for the pot so that I don't waste too much okay so I don't want to waste all that beautiful paper all right so that'll be for that pot this one I want to have in this paper so for this one I'll cut a piece out of this And in fact, this one, oh, I need to show you something with this particular die as well. It's something that I realized when I opened up my, um, my stamp set today. There we go. All right. So this pot here, or this die here, you'll notice that the straight part is at the top and the rounded part is the base and it just um, fans out a little bit just on the two sides of the pot. So when you're die cutting that, the straight edge is the top of the pot, the rounded, the slightly rounded edge is the bottom of the pot, okay? So I just thought I would point that out because I didn't realize that straight away myself. Oh, now I was going to maybe put some little handles on the back of this pot as well. So I was thinking maybe I can do that in the um, copper clay. So I've got some copper clay. Actually, I just grabbed some scrap of copper clay. Oh, actually, would it be copper clay or would it be pecan pie? Oh, I think it's this one. That's the pecan. Okay. See, this is a good this is a good idea. Oh, this is this is the reason why it's a good idea to, to keep your scraps of your cardstock. <coughs> Excuse me. Because you can use all your scraps for these types of things. All your little bits and pieces. All right, let's bring in our mini stamp and cut and emboss machine and we'll start cutting these and we'll start putting them together and have a little play with that. Um, what is it called? Metallic Enamel Effects Basics. All right, so we'll start with our base plate, our number two plate. So we've got our number one plate. Our number two plate and we'll pop these on here put them at a little bit of an angle to make it easier for the machine to um, take them through cutting side face down make sure we get that drip in the right spot where we want it in fact I might washi tape that one because I don't want that one to, to move because I want that um, glaze drip showing there. Okay, all right, there we go. So we'll put our number two plate over the top and take that through. There'll be a little bit of creaking and cracking. That's normal, that's okay. Okay, there we go. So we've got, oh, that's going to be so awesome. So there's a couple of different ideas I have with this one. Um, and I'll talk you through those in a moment. Just get all of those little bits off there. And there's our die. All right, put this to the side for the moment because we've got those other pieces um, cut. Now our little fern frond, I think that's going to need some inking. I don't think that can stay just as it is because... It's a little bit too flat and plain, isn't it? Um, so today what I did is I put my dies onto um, a magnetic sheet, which I cut down, and then I trace around each of those dies. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. Um, I trace around each of those dies so I know where they go back in place. And then I write at the top and at the bottom or wherever there's a spot, um, how many dies is on each sheet so that I know um, I can be sure that all of my dies go back on there. And this is that little pot. Look at that. Look how cool that turned out. Doesn't that look awesome? It looks so 3D, but it's not. It's a flat, 
flat design. That's so cool. You know what would be great on that is some, oh, let me see if I can reach it, some of the fine tip glue pen, but it does take a while to dry. That would be awesome over that glaze and let that dry and become shiny. That would be cool. If I had a thought that, if I had a thought of that ahead of time, I would have done that. But perhaps I can do it once my card is assembled and leave it to dry then overnight. We'll see. All right, so these are the little handles I thought we could add to our pot if we wanted to. But I kind of like it without, actually. But if you wanted to, you can, you can add these to the top on the front of your pot. But then you do cover up the top of the pot. Or you can add them behind the pot if you don't want to lose the detail of your pot, but you just want those um, handles. But I actually think I like this particular one without any handles at all. So there you go. So I think I'm gonna keep that as it is. All right. Okay, so that's the dies for the moment. So we've got that, that, that. We've got all of these ones. Now let's have a little play with this one. I want to have. I want to see if this is going to work, and if not, then I'll have to. Um, I'll have to do another one. Um, so, gold or copper? That is the question. Gold or copper? Now, the other thing I thought is you could use some of the. Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, the gold leafing. You could use gold leafing on here as well that would look really beautiful also but i think what we need to do before we do that is we need to add a little bit of ink to this to age it a little bit more first rather than just having it just that green so i'm thinking we'll probably go with the gold maybe not the copper gold or copper you could do it with either gold or copper it wouldn't really matter um, but let's grab some ink so what colors do we have here? We've got copper clay. Actually, we might do a little bit of the copper clay. So let me grab my daubers. And I might grab my crumb cake dauber as well for this one. So let's see. Um, what am I getting? Copper clay. I don't know that I have one yet for copper clay because that is a new color. Oh, this was my cinnamon, my old cinnamon cider one, which cinnamon cider isn't around anymore. So I could perhaps use that one and crumb cake. I do have one for crumb cake. There it is. It looks purple, but it's actually not. Hang on a sec. What's that one? Oh, that one doesn't have a label. It must be one of my new ones. <laughs> so I've been gradually changing my daubers because, um, yeah, we've got all the new colors. So I've been gradually changing them all. All right, so let's add a little bit of copper clay. I'll just check this first on scrap. I did have some scrap. Here we go. Just make sure there's none of that old color on there. Oh, yes. That's, that's going to be great. All right, so we'll do a little bit of copper clay on this one around the edges just to age that a bit. I mean, it is already distressed, but like the DSP looks distressed, but I'll just age it a little bit more. There we go. That looks better. That looks better already. Look at that. That looks awesome. All right. Actually, while we've got copper clay, how's that going to look on there? Let's, let's do it on a test piece. No, I think I'll use crumb cake on that one. All right, so that one's copper clay. This one is also, so this was copper clay stamped on um, crumb cake. So I might just do a little bit more around the edges, even though it's quite distressed already, just with that stamp. I think I'll just add it around the edges there. Oh yeah, that makes a difference. You probably can't see that. You probably can't see the difference that it does make on camera, but in real life it does. All right, so I didn't bring out my um, 
crumb cake. So I'll grab that now. Now my label on my crumb cake has discolored over time because I've had this one for a really long time and it's gone sort of like a greeny color, but that not, is not the color that it comes out. It does come out a crumb cake color. So it comes out like that brownie, that brownie tone there. Okay, so we'll just go around the leaves of this one. Just to stress all of those. So has anybody else bought this suite yet? Have you started creating with it? Let me know in the comments. This is my first play with it. And as soon as I saw this suite, I knew it was top of my list. It was, I knew that I was going to just love it and just have so much fun creating lots of texture and um, distressing and all of that with it. So let me know in the comments. Um, oh, Amber was literally just writing fine tip glue pen on the glaze. Yes. Yes, I think we definitely need to do that. It's just that it's going to take time to dry. So I might need to do that and then um, set it aside like for a few hours or something. So I might do that right at the very end. And then I'll set it aside to dry. So when you put the um, fine tip glue pen on, it's sort of... Um, almost like a frosted effect but when it dries it dries clear and glossy so you can use it you can use it for adhering things but you can also use it as a glossy effect as well so there we go um oh fee's loving it great that's awesome. Thanks, Fee. Oh, you love the sweet. Is that what you're referring to? Sorry, I thought you was, I thought you meant you were loving what I was doing, and then I just realized that you that um, you might have meant the sweet itself that you love. There we go. Oh, that looks better. Okay, so you might need to just pinch those leaves again because I've flattened them out a little bit while I was inking, so I'll just pinch them to give them their dimension again. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that looks better. Much better. All right. While I'm there, I might do this one too. Whoops. This little ferny one because um, let's just move that over there. Um, yeah, we might use that one as well. So I'm just going to brush a bit of ink over that with the dauber. There we go. That gives that a little bit more definition. All right, and now this one, just run a little bit of crumb cake just around that, just so the edges aren't too white. So we're distressing everything else, you know, so <laughs> why not? There we go, all right. Now, let's see if this is going to work. As I said, I haven't tried this yet, so I'm testing it with you all, and I don't know if it's even gonna dry in time. So the metallic enamel effects, you can use, um, oh, you love the little pot? Yes, and the fan thing. Yeah, the, um, I think it's a, I don't know, is it a type of fir, um, palm? Like a, a palm leaf, I think. We used to have at our old house, we had a palm tree out the front and I'm pretty sure that it had palm leaves that were kind of in that shape. So I'm thinking that that's kind of like a palm leaf. But yeah, it does look like a fan though. I agree. <laughs> um, let me just scroll back up and see if I've missed any comments. I think I've kept up. Is there anything I've missed? Amber is also here in the comments as well. Amber, if I'm missing any comments, can you grab them um, for me? Oh, Rose said, which one is darker, copper clay or pecan pie? I can show you. So this one is the pecan pie and this one is the copper clay. So the copper clay is more sort of orangey ready base, I guess. And the pecan pie is um, more sort of brownie, brown. Yeah, so this one's got more red in it. 
This one's got more brown or, or yellow in it. Yep, so pecan pie, copper clay. Copper clay is the darker one. Okay. Yeah, it's. I know I keep getting confused between the two of them too, and I've always got to look on my uh, ink pads to remind me which one is which. Still getting the, the hang of it. Yeah. Oh, yes, Dimity said, yes, it's a palm. There you go. Yeah. All right, so what you can do with this metallic enamel effects, now you can use your silicon craft sheet for this, but you can make your own embellishments. So you can create little... You know how we get our little circle embellishments? You can make your own little embellishments like that, okay? So you need to let them dry um, and then take them off and then adhere them just with your glue. But my idea that I was thinking was if I put a little puddle of this here, I wonder what it would be like dabbed on my pot randomly. Now, I want to make sure that I don't get... Actually, I should have done it the other way. Oh, now I'm probably going to get it on my fingers. All right, I'm going to do it this way. And just dab it on my pot to give a patina effect. So it'll kind of look like... It's kind of a like a faux patina on my pot. There we go. And because I've only done that thinly, hopefully that's going to dry. So there you go. Can you see that gold now on the pot? So it's like a, a, a patina effect. So it's it's oxidizing with the uh, with the weather. So I thought that would be a little bit of fun. You can put it on a little bit heavier than that if you want to. I've just done it fairly lightly because I wasn't sure how it would look. Actually, let's use some of those little bobbly bits there we go so there we've got our our goldy sort of pot that looks really cool i love that effect so now i need to clean my fingers up because i've just got ink everywhere well whatever that stuff is metallics <laughs> metallic enamel effect so i'll grab a baby wipe oh i can get one out of the packet just clean my fingers up so that was the idea that I had when I saw that and I saw this paper I thought oh I can create my own patina on that so I thought that would be a bit of fun okie dokie pop that up there all right so I might leave these other three I've got three left there three little dots there I might leave them um, to the side and um, leave them to dry so that I can create little um, embellishments. In fact, why don't I make a few more and then I can just set them aside to dry. I'll make all the same size ones, or well, thereabouts. Oh, that one had an air bubble. That one needs a little bit more. Oh, that one's a bit bigger. So when you um, lift up the bottle, it kind of gives you like a teardrop kind of effect. But then it settles down and it becomes round again. I mean, they're not perfectly round like our like some of our round um, embellishments. But they're not bad. Like, I think they're fun. So you can make them whatever size you want. We can make a bigger one. They're just, the bigger they are, the more, the longer they're going to take to dry, of course. So you can do that. You can do all sorts of things with it. You can do, um, you can do squiggles. Um, and I showed you how you can use it like paint, just using a sponge, or you might like to use a sponge dauber as well. Um, so yeah, so just have a little play with it. But I'll pop that on my shelf now to dry. Whoops, nearly lost a lot. There we go. But I've created my little patina on my pot which I love so hopefully that will dry pretty quickly because I've only done a thin layer um yeah the fine tip glue pen on this one I think I'll add that later because that's not going to dry so quickly because I'll need to add a thicker layer all right so there we've got our pots now we've got to work out our um our layers 
Now I'm thinking that we might need a little bit of, um, we might, might need to bring in a little bit more of the um, Pretty Peacock. So, just seeing what I've got here. So let's see. So maybe we'll do a layer. Oh, that one's got it. Can't use that one. There's another one. Is that a cut? Oh, that one's already cut as a layer. Look at that. That one's already cut in a layer and a layer size. Oh, good. All right. Well, we'll use that one. It's got a bit of a dinged corner, but that's okay. Um, and then that one can go on top just to lift that a little bit. And then that will coordinate with that, I think. How's that going to look? Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna ink it. <laughs> Inking everything today. All right, let's get my daubers. We need our pretty peacock one. So I've got all of my daubers stored in these containers. These containers I bought um, online. There's my pretty peacock. Um, and the daubers are Stampin' Up daubers. And I've got them in colour order. So I've got one container with my cool colours and one container with my warm colours. And some of the retired ones I've kept in there as well. And thankfully I did because some of them um, that had retired before I was able to bring back out. But there were a couple that had perished as well. So I had to chuck them because um, they do perish over time and with use as well. Especially if you're using them on the edge of your cardstock like I do. Um, then they can... Yeah, because the, the edge of the cardstock can eventually tear through the foam on the dauber. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra colour here, just to distress this layer a little bit. So anybody watching over on my YouTube channel later on when I upload this video, um, if you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would love you to subscribe if you like what you see. Um, and while you're there, click on the um, little bell icon and then you can choose how you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos. But yeah, please, um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you're watching here on Facebook and you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would love for you to go over and um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be awesome if you would. Thank you so much if you haven't already. And if you have already, thank you to you as well. All right, there we go. So that layer and then that layer. So we'll have to, yeah, that's better. All right. So we're going to have to trim this one down. All right. So this piece here, so this one measures 10.1 um, uh, by 14.45. And then I will do another two millimeter border with this one, which will be 9.7 centimeters by 14.05. So we'll do the 9.7 first, 9.7 by 14.05 because I've started with 14.85 um, as my card front. So I've got the, the I've got the point. 0.5s in there. Now I know a lot of you don't like doing the the point fives, so if you don't want to do the point fives, then just take it up or down a centimeter, depending on what size your card base is when you start. Um, then yeah, you'll have to just adjust it. Uh, let's see. Yep. Okay, that'll be good. Awesome. Okay, so we've got that there. Then we've got our pots. So we're going to need to break that up for, so that our pots will um, stand out. So we'll have to use some more DSP. So let's have a look and see. Um, all right, hang on one sec. I need to move some things because 
I've dumped everything on top of my DSP. <laughs> so I can't get to it. All right, there we go. My trimmer can go back over there. All righty, so let's see. What have we got? We could use... Not the blue, because we've got the, the greeny tones happening. So I'm thinking, ooh, ooh. Maybe some of that. No, we can't go with blues. Oh, we've got that too. That would be nice. It's also beautiful. It's just like, which one do you use? Um... Oh, now those of you too who might be watching who have purchased my um, or have, who have ordered my paper shares or my in color shares, um, they are almost ready. I've got them bagged up. I just need to bundle them up now. So in the next probably 24 hours, I will be getting in contact with you to let you know they are ready to be picked up or they've been popped in the post, depending on if you've selected postage or um, pickup pickup option um so yeah so you'll have your papers really soon to be able to play with as well maybe some of that i think i like this one you know what i'm gonna do i'm going to tear this i'm gonna tear it okay so we're going to carefully tear along the edge there How wide a piece do we need? Probably just to there, I think. And then height wise, I'm just winging this guys, as you can tell, I'm just winging it. Um, to, yeah, mm, yeah, probably about there. Um, because I hadn't actually had a chance to design anything and I was getting ideas from the catalogue and then I thought I will just go with whatever happens on the day and create as we go today. All right, I just might continue tearing that all the way across. So when you're tearing, just tear little sections at a time and notice I'm supporting the cardstock at the back as well so I don't end up this torn edge here you don't want to end up with a really wide tear okay so if you just did if you just grabbed that cardstock and just tore it all the way down this white edge would get really big and thick and you don't want that you just want a little torn edge now this piece i can use that on the inside of a card or i can use that for a layer for another project so i won't throw that piece out i'll keep that and use that for another project all right so we've got our layers like so and then this one is going to go across so we'll tear the edges of this too now we're not going to leave these edges white of course we're going to dauber them with some color so we'll go across there and then this one will be about down here so i'm tearing towards myself which gives me that white edge on the right hand side piece okay because I'm right handed now I might make that a little bit smaller but we'll see I'll just lay it down on the pots I'll lay the pots down on it first and see how that looks and then decide let's just move our scrap paper out of the way these are our pots and yeah we probably need a smaller a smaller piece I think so we'll just again I just I'm not wasting the paper because I will use this other piece on another project there we go something like that and we will mount these up as well I'll have them there something like that um, this one might come out the top there oh we've got our other stamped ones too our stamped images so we might stamp some of those and we could potentially put them into some of the pots this um, taller pots 
yeah, we'll play around with that anyway. Um, and we need to ink this paper. So I think we'll ink that in the um, crumb cake. I think we'll go with the crummers for that one. This one is drying nicely, that patina. That's drying nicely on there. Just use crumb cake. Crumb cake, if you are um, distressing things, crumb cake is a really great colour to use because it's like a really good brown colour that's not too dark and not too light. It's just sort of, you know, the right, the right brownie tone. And in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to grab a blending brush. A brown one. Take a bit of ink on my blending brush and I'm just going to blend a bit of ink over the top of that DSP as well just so that it's not too white, too, too white and bright compared to the rest of my um, colours that I'm using. There we go. Just a little bit like that. That looks better. So it's not too stark white in comparison to the other colours. All right, beautiful. Okay, great. We are going well. Um, all right, so we're going to stamp some of these now. Now, what colours do you think I should stamp these in? So we've got all the different colours there. We've got, um, I could do some, I wonder if we put a pop of um, Moody Mauve. How would that go? Let's see, what have we got? Just having a look at the colours in the catalogue to get a little bit of an idea. We've got some grey granite there. Um, so here's where the this one is what I'm looking at in terms of colour because they've got the, um, the peacock, the pretty peacock. Um, looks like a bit of pebbled path in there with the copper clay. So I'm wondering if we, we do a little bit of copper clay Oh, sorry, not copper clay. Um, well, yeah, we could do more. Maybe pebble path, pebble path, and pecan pie, perhaps. We we'll just stamp a few and then see how they see how they look. Um, I think I'm going to stamp them onto some vanilla. So we'll grab some vanilla. I'll just cut this piece down a little bit so that we're not wasting too much cardstock all at once. We just, I like to always cut my cardstock down into workable sizes. So I'll cut this in half at 14.85 and then I'll keep one half as a card base if I want to use that as a card base later. And then this one I'll cut in half at 10.5, which gives you two card front sizes. And then I'll do my stamping on one of those. Um, let's see. Oh, comments. Sorry, I've been not looking at the comments. Um, ba -ba -da -da -da. Amber said, oh, nice. Yes. Uh, Rose said, can't you do it straight on the card and let it dry? Um, which one? I missed, I missed where I was up to when you commented on that one. Sorry, Rose. Can you do it straight on the card and let it dry? The, did you mean the, um, the fine tip glue pen or were you talking about the metallic enamel effects? You could do either. Um, this just takes a while to dry though, the fine tip glue pen. Um, oh, Amber said not the pretty reverse side. Oh, it is too. It's that one. It is too. <laughs> I didn't realize. It's okay. I'm ordering more. Don't panic. Don't panic. It's all good. <laughs> There'll be more coming. All right, so let's stamp some of these. Um, let's see now. Actually, you know what? What if we had, if I put the pots like this, we could have this one in the pretty peacock coming out of the out of the um, copper pot. So let's stamp that one. I haven't stamped these yet, so let's see how this one comes out. Oh, pretty. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Gorgeous. All right. I'll just give that one a quick clean because I don't want that ink to stain that pot because it's quite a deep color. 
All right, so we've got that one, and let's do some Pebbled Path. I've got Pebbled Path and Pecan Pie here, so I'll do the Pebbled Path first. I think this one with Pebbled Path. Oh, nice. Oh, I didn't stamp that very well. Hang on a sec. Let me do that again. Didn't put enough pressure on the top part. That's better. Beautiful. Yeah, that's nice. All right. And then we've got the little one. We'll do all different colors. Give this one a clean. Let's do the little one in the pecan pie and have a look what that looks like. Oh, that's pretty too. Very nice. Okay, so we'll die cut those. That'll give us a few to play with. And then we can decide what we like. We can always restamp some different colours if we, if the colours don't go. All right. Oh, I didn't clean that side very well. That's it. Um, no, still some more ink there. Got it. Some of the ink gets a little bit stuck in between these little um, pieces up here. So you've got to just make sure that you get, get all of that out. All right. Now, I did have this, this big pot here too. I was maybe going to use that as well. That was a stamped pot. Um, but I really like the three pots that I've got there. I don't want to introduce a fourth pot, really. I like to have odd numbers of things. Um, but I do really like that pot too. So... That's all right. I might use that one on a different card. We'll just go with what we've got at the moment. All right, so we'll bring in, put all of this together. Still don't know if I'm going to use this piece yet, and I did ink that, so I don't like how I inked that one, actually. That's okay. It doesn't matter if we don't use all of them. All right, we'll die cut these ones. Now, because my cardstock is wider than the plates of the mini and the feeding the feeding mouth here what i'm going to do is i'll cut these apart roughly and i'll be able to die cut two of these at once and that's the one we didn't stamp properly so well, i didn't stamp properly not we i because you all didn't stamp it you would have stamped it beautifully first time, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, and we'll grab the coordinating dies for those. So we've got that one and that one. So let's go one up one way and one down the other way. And I think I'm going to have to use washi tape to hold these in place this time because we don't want that to move as we are die cutting. So I just might line that up here first and then put my washi tape down. Oops. Okay, got it, got it, got it. So washi that. And washy that. All right, so we'll top and tail them. We'll put this one up this way. And this one, I love this color, pretty peacock. It's such a gorgeous color, vibrant color. It's a beautiful um, bluey green color. Really happy that this one returned. It was, um, it was quite a popular colour when it was an in-colour before. So it's good that they brought it back. All right, so we'll top and tail them like that. There we go. And then we'll do another plate over the top. And take that through our Mighty Mini. Oh, the metallic one, Rose. Yes, I could. Um, could do that straight on the card as well. And it would it would dry. I think if you did it, if you do it lightly enough with that sponge, 
um, it'll dry pretty quickly if you're creating like your own embellishments and die cutting them really thick that um, it's going to be a little bit too um, like take too much time to dry all right so I'm not I don't know about these on the white I'm wondering if I should have done them color, tone on tone I mean not white sorry vanilla I'm not sure so we'll see oh my video just paused hang on a sec what's going on are we still live it looks like it's still going my video just paused over on my computer so let me know in the comments if you can still see me because i'm not sure why that just paused over there it looks like it's still going here on the uh on the ipad just my computer has just frozen that's what happened to me on Thursday, I think it was too. So it might just be a computer thing. It doesn't like Facebook. <laughs> That's sad. Or maybe it's just having a hard time keeping up. All right, so we've got those two and we'll do this one as well. Just not sure about doing them in these colors. I'm thinking maybe I should have done them in. oh I've got an idea um, well actually I could do that while I'm die cutting this one perhaps hang on a sec let me just line this up oh, that one lined up nice and easily I'm thinking this one here what if we did this one in grey granite that might be nice so we might do that as well okay grey granite where are you Okay, I've got a little piece of grey granite here. So let's just, I'll just um, trim that on my trimmer. And we'll cut one of these in grey granite. And then that way we've got a couple of different colours. Is that going to fit on there now? I don't think I've left enough room to fit that on. Let's trim this down a little bit more. Cut away a bit of this cardstock. Uh oh, it came unstuck. There we go. And we fit them both on there together. So we have a few different colours of foliage. Foliage? Is that what you would call it? In our pots, so that they're not all the same. Because we've got a lot of colour, a lot of different colours going on here. Um, with the metallic enamel effects you can find that in the annual catalog if you're looking for it um, it's towards the back of the catalog uh, just trying to think what page it was on I think it was near is it with coloring tools it's towards the back of the catalog anyway um, so you'll find it there or you can just search for it in my online store if you're looking for it okay so let's see what we have yeah I'm thinking maybe I don't know I don't know we'll see okay let's have a look at this now what we've got have a look at what we've got alrighty yep so I'm not seeing anything on my computer oh it's okay but it's been buffering through the session oh has it Rose I'm sorry about that that's annoying oh thank you for letting me know that it's still going okay um, yeah it's it's a bit weird how it keeps doing that and I'm not sure if it's um, if it's my internet or if it's just Facebook just having a hard time with 
live videos. I'm not sure. Just got to fix that piece up there because it was a little bit too wide. Just add a little bit more crumb cake. Ink. There we go. Let's go that way. Let's go that way. All right. So pot. Pot. I've probably changed the um, the direction of the, the not the direction the um, layout of these pots numerous times, but that's okay. I did actually, because I think I had that one on that side, didn't I? That and that one. I sort of do them at different heights. There we go. Something like that. And let's see, so we've got this one now. Could go there behind that pot. And I will mount these up on um, dimensionals as well. That one can go in that little pot. Or should that one go in the tall pot, perhaps? Let's see. I'll make sure that it can fit on the page though. I mean on the card. On the page. On the card. Do, 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 do. Now she goes quiet while she thinks. <laughs> Okay, well that can go something like that perhaps. And then this one, I was thinking could come out of there, out of that pot. But I think we'll have to do a bit of inking or something with that because it looks too, the vanilla looks too sort of stark. And then this one could have that one like that, something like that. Could it have two of those maybe? One and two. Then it covers up the pot, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe just the one. Okay. Let's have a look on the, uh, on the catalog and see what they, how they did this one. So I'm using this as inspiration today. Um, well, in this one, they've actually stamped it. Looks like they've stamped it straight onto that background. Well, we can't do that. Um, that's the only one they've used. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, they've used the vanilla here by the look of it in this one. Um, yeah, well, I guess if we, we inked it maybe around the edges or should we just leave it as it is? I don't know. We need some more texture here, so let's add. Okay, oh, we've got this one too. That one going there as well. Let's see. No, not, not vibing that, not vibing that at all. Okay, well, we might just go with that. Something like that. And then we'll add some more um, paper in here. Could add some of that that we tore off the, the back of this one. Put that there. Oops, things are starting to move. Um, we need the twine as well. So we need some of this somewhere in here. I 
I might grab, um, let's see, maybe some of that one. It's a bit too same, bit same, same as that though. It's not as quite as dark, I think. There is, there is these pieces here that are a bit lighter. Just wanting to put something else under there, like that. Oh, we, maybe we need a bigger piece of this under there. Don't know. What do you all think? This one, this one would go. This one will go, I think. Okay. We still need our sentiment too, though. We did that and that and put that under there. All right, maybe we should do um, all right, I might just I'm you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna tear a strip of this one. <laughs> More of that pretty one on the back. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, I wanted to tear the other way actually. That way, that's it. We are getting more of this, so don't panic, Amber. It's okay. Okay, and then I can ink along the edges of that one, and then we could maybe layer these together somehow. Oh, we could just have a straight we could just have a straight edge of that actually and then we can have a torn edge of that one maybe just to add a few extra textures or we could go like that and like that I'm very undecisive about this card indecisive that's the word indecisive I'm loving, I'm loving the, the pots, but it's just getting the right layers. And because I'm trying not to, I'm getting ideas from the catalog, but I'm trying not to case it exactly. And just trying to um, get some different layers and colors and textures and things in there. If we went that way, like that. I think I like the straight edge actually with that torn edge the torn edge of that one and the straight edge of that one um, so let's see oh a few more comments have come through um, ba -ba 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 -ba. oh hey Alison how are you great to have you with us catching the end again oh that's okay no worries I am still deciding on how I'm putting this card together. We're winging it a bit today. Um, hey, Jenny, how are you going? You've been a bit busy. Oh, you're going to watch the replay on YouTube. Awesome. Thanks, Jenny. Hey, Megan, how are you going? You love this suite as well? Yes. Remind you of your goddaughter who was born in Tanzania. Oh, nice. Um, uh, you think the bigger piece? Uh, you can't tear, can't ever tear DSP. <laughs> you love tearing, but you can't do it. Oh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's something that I just, I don't know. I just love the texture of it. So what if, what would that look like if I did that? How about that? That doesn't look too bad. Not too bad. I need to trim off a little bit on this side of this one though. And this one too. All right, so what if we go like this? Just move those 
pots for a minute. Oh, I'll have to ink the edges of this one first. Uh, let me just do that. My peacock. My pretty peacock. I don't even know if you'll see most of this, but we'll ink it anyway, just to be sure. And you know what? I'm going to ink it along that edge as well. Along that straight edge. But I thought I'd, I, yeah, to bring in, because we've got straight edge here, and we've got the straight edge of the card, I thought I might bring in the straight edge with this piece here, along there like that, and then we can have the torn edge of this one, which we're going to ink as well in, what are we inking that one in? I might just do it in the crumb cake as well, I think. Let my crumb cake go. Crumb cake, there we go. We'll ink that one along those torn edges. Actually, it probably would have been good in the cinnamon cider too. Just looking at that now. You can always go back over it in cinnamon cider. go over that in cinnamon cider actually the pecan you lose the pecan a little bit oh sorry you lose the crumb cake a little bit um not cinnamon cider what am i talking about i'm looking at my cinnamon cider door but i'm not using cinnamon cider because it's not a current color um copper clay or pecan pie copper clay i think copper clay not cinnamon cider disregard that <laughs> we don't have cinnamon cider anymore yeah that's the one that's the one so this is copper clay that's the that's it that looks better okay yes we lost the uh the crumb cake on this designer series paper it was a little bit too light but we can see this much better there we go i mean getting a little bit inky today ink all over my fingers but that's okay we are crafters. We are allowed to get inky. And that's why we should always have baby wipes or a wet towel or something like that nearby. <laughs> um, oh, no, you lost me, Glenda. Did you? Am I still am I still live? It looks like it's still filming. Um, Rose said that it kept on buffering. So... Is anybody else oh megan's can still see me oh that's good thank you megan um glitching yeah it has been glitching a little bit megan yeah yeah it's being a bit annoying i think it's it's giving me the wind up saying you've been on there long enough get off oh there you go those two colors together will look good yeah Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'll just take all these off. I'm going to adhere this layer to the to this layer, the Pretty Peacock layer, because it keeps moving and um, it's throwing off my alignment of everything. So I'll just quickly adhere this. So that we can at least keep those two together. There we go. And in fact, I think I will even adhere them down to the crumb cake base because I'm going to, um, I'll use the twine, but I'm going to use it on the front of the card. I'm not going to wrap it around the layers. So I think we'll just adhere this down to hold it in place. And then that'll be one less thing that keeps moving on us so that we can get everything else lined up. Now, those layers aren't perfect, but that's okay. All right. Okay. Now we can work on these layers. So that, that, and make a piece of this. 
across there might be nice too. Or, oh, I've got an idea. We could wrap this around one of those pots. Around that pot, that one, the, the, this one, the terracotta one. How would that be wrapped around? We could do wrap a piece of that around there too, couldn't we? Or a couple of layers, perhaps? What would a couple of layers look like? Oh yeah. We'll just do one layer. Might wrap a couple of layers of this around there too. Not sure if this piece is long enough that I've just cut. Or oh, it might hold. Might hold with some glue dots. Let's chuck some glue dots onto that. So this is an old packet of glue dots that I found floating around. And um, it's wound the opposite way to our current glue dots that we have. So pop a little glue dot on there. Oops. See, is that going to fit all the way across? I might get actually, I might get a longer piece because I want to wrap it all the way around. Just I might use that piece elsewhere. Glue dot. On there and we'll start on the back here and we'll just wrap that wrap that around I might actually put a glue dot under the middle of that too to hold that down on the front oops might want to go straight that might be helpful here we go and then we'll put another glue dot on that one that's going to hold at the back wrap that around again and put another glue dot under there lots of glue dots but we want that to stay on and then let's trim that end put another glue dot on the end bit and then that will adhere to the back there we go oh how cute is that that looks cute. Yeah, I like that. Awesome. So we've got our, our glazed pot, our patina pot, and our terracotta pot with some of that twine wrapped around it. And I think we're gonna cut, oh, well, I was gonna use this piece, wasn't I? This one sort of started to come unraveled a little bit as I was playing around with it. But I think we can still use that. Yeah, okay. All right. So let's pop this piece down. down about here there we go are we still live now am I got have I got any comments let's have a look um, just have to scroll through them on my computer because now my oh, sorry on my iPad because now my computer has frozen um, uh, do, 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 do. screen is glitching Oh, no worries, Megan. Yeah, if it's too much for your eyes, then um, just come back and watch the replay if it's playing up. That's okay. All right, so I might attach these two like that. These two layers. So we'll glue those down. And then 
this one. Like so. Oh, that one's not straight. I guess it doesn't really matter because we've got lots of textures and layers and things going on. That's all right. There we go. All right. And then this piece, we might put across the two of them like that, maybe. How would that look across there? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's just do it. Winging it. And hoping it turns out okay. <laughs> I think it should. This is um, beautiful, a beautiful suite to play with. So I think it wouldn't matter what you did, it would look beautiful whatever you did with this suite. There we go, all right. So we'll pop this, I might actually, I'm just wondering, because I want to be able to see that torn edge. Maybe I'll pop it up just, a, just above that. There like that. I hope that stays, hope that stays put. All right. I've got a messy, messy desk today. Oh my goodness. All right, we'll pop this away. We'll get rid of our little, well, I'll keep that scrap, but these little tiny bits I'll get rid of. Can't use those little tiny ones again. All right, so now let's arrange our pots. Okay, so I'm going to put some dimensionals onto the backs of my pots. So let's grab those. This one has dried now. The, um, the metallic enamel effects, that's dried on there now. So that's good. It didn't take too long. I think we're not going to use those two. And I think we're not going to use that one. This one hasn't been inked or distressed at all. Maybe I need to put a bit of ink on that one before we add that. So what I'll do is I'll put, um, so that's the base of the pot. Uh, let's see, are they gonna overlap or sit above? That one might overlap. That one will be above. Just working out where to put the dimensionals on here. I don't wanna put them too close to the top because we need to be able to put our little stems and things in. With this one, this one is going to overlap that twine, so I don't want to put the, the um, dimensional too close to the bottom for that one. And then this one, we can't put them over the, um, the twine there, so that should be all right for that one there. Okay. Okie dokie. So let's get these lined up where we want them. And then, oh, we don't, we haven't worked out the sentiment actually. We should do that before I stick all these down because we've got to work out where we're going to put the sentiment. Um, so what have we got? We've got thank you. You are proof there is good in the world. With gratitude, your thoughtfulness is much appreciated and you always know just what to say and do. Um, I might just use with gratitude, I think, just the, oh, your thoughtfulness is much appreciated. I like that one too. Mm, I might do that one. Your thoughtfulness is much appreciated. Yep, that one. It's a tiny little sentiment. Uh, we'll grab a block. And just wondering what color we'll have that on. Um, might put that onto some gray granite, perhaps, because that'll bring in, that'll help to bring in the gray 
granite. I should need to ink that one. Grey granite. Oh, we could stamp it in. We could stamp it in copper clay. Or we could stamp it onto copper clay and um, heat emboss it, perhaps. Hmm. Hmm. I might bring in the. Yeah, I think we'll do that. And I'll just use my, um, I've got my banners pick a punch here. So we'll just use that for the label. And let's see the width that we need. The width of that is, so what have we got? We've got it in inches. Um, half an inch would be wide enough, I think. Half an inch. So if I'm going to stamp onto Pebbled Path, I'm probably going to need to white emboss that. But because that's so fine, I don't think that's going to white emboss very well. It's a very fine font. Maybe I'll just do it on black. I'll just stamp it on black. Or, um, hmm. let's see, I'll just cut this strip first at half an inch. And we'll banner one end. I might use the arrow end today. Just lining that up in my punch, trying to get that. So we've got the first little arrow. Yep. And I'm just wondering if I stamp that in copper. Uh, if I sorry, if I stamp that in Pebble Path on Pebble Path, are we going to see it? We probably won't see it, will we? So maybe if I just stamp it in Memento, we might see it better. Oops, there's a bit of bit of fluff on there. It's very very fine, so we'll see. All right, uh, let's see if I can line this up. Your thoughtfulness is much appreciated. Oh, we can see that. It's very subtle. Very subtle. But I didn't stamp it very well, so I'll do it again. I think that'll look okay, though. We'll stamp it again on the reverse side, because we can. There we go. It's very, very subtle. Now, because I flipped that cardstock over put my punch oh no I need my punch don't put that away yet um, because I stamped that oh on the opposite side I just need to take my bone folder and just burnish the edges because the cardstock um, it's on the reverse side so the cardstock is kind of pushed down in the wrong direction all right so that little piece that I snipped out of the end there I'm going to use that as my measure for the other side so that I can see the distance that I need to trim my cardstock. So I use this as my little measure, whoops. Okay, so one about the same distance from the end between the words and the, the tip of that label on the other side. So I'm using this little piece that I already snipped from this end as my measure on this end. And where the straight edge is, I'm gonna put a little pencil mark, oh, a little pencil mark. Okay, and where that pencil mark is, that's where I'm going to trim my cardstock. So, I'll just trim that off camera for a sec. Okay, so now when I punch with my punch, I should get the same amount of, um, the same, what am I trying to say? The same measurement from the words to the end of the cardstock. Oh, oh, where did it go? 
Oh, there it is. It fell out. There we go. Oh, except I didn't have that lined up properly. Now it hasn't punched properly. Joel. All right, let me see if I can fix that. Oh, it's one of those days. One of those days. All right, let me just see if I can line that back up. But it's very short now, so it's going to be hard to line it up. Oh. It's just a little bit off. Ah, uh, no, I'm going to start again. Now it's stuck. There we go. I'll have to start again. I can't line that up. It's too small. Okay, let's do that again. One inch strip. No, half inch strip. Right, half inch strip, punch one end, use a little guide to slide it in, although I think I've cut it just a little bit wider. There we go. Okay, stamp again. Because if it's not right, I won't be happy, so I'm better off just doing it again. There we go, okay. Let that dry a little bit. Ink up there. All right, we're gonna measure. Use that little off cut piece to measure the distance between our words and where we want our little angled edge or angled end, I should say. So it'll be about there. Mark with pencil, trim on our trimmer. There we go. And now let's try and line that up in the punch properly this time. Oops, better use the right side of the punch. It's a little short piece, so it's quite hard to hold. And is that lined up? That's lined up better, I think, this time. That should come. There we go. That's better. Okay. I'm happy with that now. <laughs> See, it pays to, if you're not happy with it, it pays to redo. Do a do over. All right. Okay. So we'll give our sentiment a clean. So now we've got our sentiment label and I think that's just going to probably just go down there. I think it's probably going to go down there. And we'll just arrange our pots and all of our bits that are going in our pot. Now this is the one, this one's going to need to be trimmed off actually because it's not going to fit all of that down in behind there. But this is the one I wanted to make sure, okay, so this one's got to go down a bit lower if that's going to fit in the top of the card. So that's a bit lower than I had anticipated. I should have measured that before. What I might do is I'll put some mini dimensionals on the back of this one so I can kind of get the, um, the aspect, is that the word? Where it's going to sit. Because um, those, yeah, I think we just put one there in the middle because all those other petals are going to sit up. So that should hold it there. And then I'll put some glue on the stem as well just to hold it in place. But yeah, that one's got to go down lower. So I've probably got my dimensionals in the wrong spot for that one. So I might have to move that, that dimensional off the bottom. Just take that one off there. So it's going to be over the top there. You know what? I'm going to put this down in place now. So that will go there like that. 
and I was going to put a little bit of glue just under the um, I'll use my fine tip I'm just going to put a little bit of glue underneath the stem here doesn't matter that I'm bending that because hopefully that will be covered by the pot just get my glue flowing come on glue oh it's stuck hang on just give it a bit of a squeeze oh I think it's blocked oh there we go it's flowing now so we'll just put a bit of glue under there that'll help to secure that one let's hold that there for a moment okay that'll help to secure that one and then cap that one straight away the fine tip glue pen it does dry really quickly so you've got to cap it as quickly as you can all right, so I'm gonna put a dimensional just there. I'll just put a mini there, cause that's what I had. And that one will go there like that. Okay, all right, so let's put, actually, will I fit another mini? I might fit another mini there at the very bottom. So let's grab, or if you've got um, any edge pieces, any of those little narrow edge pieces, you could probably fit one of those there too. All right, here we go. We're nearly there, everybody. It's been a bit of an epic uh, card making session today, hasn't it? Few, few different little techniques and things in there, and a little bit of fiddling, a little bit of fiddling around with things. Okay, so there's our patina pot with that one there, and this one, this one's going to sit up a bit higher. But I've got to fit these in there and I didn't ink that yet. All right, so let's get some. So we need a pebbled path. So let's see, do we have one for pebbled path just yet? No, we don't. But I can use the basic grey because basic grey and pebbled path, um, they are different. This one's more brown tone, but they are both dark colours. So these should be okay to... To mix together I'm just going to add a little bit of distressing to this one too because everything else is distressed so you know got to keep with the same the same theme going through out and you probably can't really tell the difference on camera but in person you can see the ink there it does make a difference we need to trim that one And then with this one, because of the colour of that one, I think we're going to have to leave that one just as it is in that colour. That's going to need to go down there like that. And this pot can sit up a bit higher, I think, if we can fit those in there. I need to go down just a little bit. Yeah. All right, we'll put some... We'll put some dimensionals onto this one, some minis. Go. Yep. Let's trim. I'm just going to trim that one a bit, so we don't have as much to try and feed down behind the pot. Then that can go up there like that. That one there like that, and this one. This one was going to be the lowest pot, but it's turned out that the patina pot is the lowest pot. You know what I could have done? Oh, why didn't I think of that before? I could have chopped this pot off and made it not so tall, made that a lower pot. Because just because we die cut these pots the size that they are, we can actually trim them down and make them shorter pots. So if I had have thought about that, I would have done that with that one and just trimmed it down a little bit. In fact, could I? probably could now what if I did what if I trimmed it because I've still got the stem there oh <gasps> should I do it should I do it what do you think should I do it should I be game and do it 
I don't know if I'm going to get it straight. I'm scared I'm not going to get it straight. If I go this way from the right hand side because I'm right handed. Where's that stem end? I'm going to do it. I'm going to be brave. There. There, we just trim that little pot off a tad. And, okay, let me grab a scrap. So I need to put a little bit of ink along the top. So I'm going to put the scrap paper underneath and just add a little bit of ink along the top. And nobody will ever know. Look at that. <laughs> there you go. So there's another little tip for you. You don't have to have the pots that full length, that full height. Okay, look. So now it's even different because look, look at the difference in the height now. That's the same pot. See, they look different now. <laughs> you love it, Fee. Thank you. We are winging it today. It's uh hasn't gone exactly how I planned, but that's okay. Okay, so this one is going to go here. I just am not loving the, the all this white here because of the, I think because we've got so much other texture sort of going on. Maybe I should just use a little bit of the crumb cake around the edge of that. I just think it's too stark in, in comparison to everything else that's going on on this project because everything is distressed and I just don't want it to be looking out of place. Oh, there you go. Look, that's made a difference already. Put a bit. I'll just go over the top of some of that as well. There you go. Oh, that makes a difference already. Okay. That's better. That's better. Okay. So we need to position this so that that is sitting there like that. So I think I'll position this first and then I'll position the pot. So this is why people, I usually design my cards or at least have an idea of what I'm doing before I go live because otherwise we end up here all day <laughs> which I don't mind because I'm the one crafting but it gets a bit boring I think for people that are just watching there we go okay and then this one's going to go in there so this is going to go there like so yep so it's just going to sit over the top of that trim so let's do that. Now I'm going to sneak a little bit of glue. Whoops, it's got my iPad. Sneak a little bit of glue just under the the um, ends of that one there, just to hold that down out of the way. And also too, because where my um, dimensionals are going to attach, I don't want them sitting up off that if that wasn't adhered down do you know what I mean like I don't want them floating so this pot is gonna go here like that just sitting up off the edge there and then this one is gonna go in here somewhere it's gonna have that down lower go about there I might actually pop that one up onto double dimensionals. I might put that one up higher on two layers. Sit it up a bit higher in front of the other two. So I've got one layer of dimensionals there already. I'm going to add a second layer. Just pop that up nice and high. There we go. And this will go down here. And I think Maybe I should sit that up, just see. Maybe I should sit that up a little bit higher so that we can see that trim there. Let's see, how does that look there? Like that, or maybe down just a little bit so it's just sitting just over the edge of it. Like that. And then that will need to be trimmed as all the others. And that will be 
in that pot like that or should it go that way oh that way that's it there like that isn't it yeah just wondering if it should go down a little bit I'm not sure this one's sitting down so low if that looks a bit odd so low beneath the other two I have that one there Yeah, maybe they're like that. Which means I have to take off now one of those dimensionals because it's going to be sitting over that ribbon, over that twine. Not ribbon, it's twine. I'll just move that. Oop. So I'll put two minis on the bottom instead. So change, change that idea. So one layer, take the backing off, add an extra layer. Whoops. Oh. Except you're supposed to lay them right over the top of each other. And I just laid them offset. So let's just do that second one again. Hang on a minute. There we go. All right. And we'll go. So we are hiding that, that ribbon a little bit, but I think it would be better to have those two a little bit more a little bit lower let's just do that just going to stick it and stop stop overthinking it all right and then this one is going to I'm going to have that so that it's sort of laying that way so we'll add a little bit of glue to that and I'll have to adhere different fronds so that it doesn't um, fall off. So we'll just put some up the center and then we'll do some of these fronds here and some of these. We won't do with the top ones. We'll stick that down in there and we'll just have that have some of those fronds sticking down just to hold it in place and the rest can sit up in the air there we go good okay now we need to add our sentiment label and yeah I think I'm just going to pop that down there on dimensionals but before I do that let's do the edges our pebbled path. I thought I might have had enough ink left on my dauber, but I don't. So we've got to ink everything because everything is distressed. The only thing I didn't distress was the DSP, uh, which I could have, but there was already so much texture on that. I thought it didn't, it wasn't really necessary. It would have looked good, but um, yeah, it wasn't really needed. Whoops, went a bit low there. That's okay. It's distressed. There we go. Okay. All right, and we'll pop some dimensionals onto the back of that one. We'll use some minis. Actually, do my standard ones fit on the back of that? Oh, they do. There we go. We'll use the standard size. Stick one in the middle. And... And just lay that there, like so. There we go. And now we just need to add some bling. So that is all attached. Um, for bling, we've got three different ones to choose from. We've got the rustic metallic adhesive back dots. We've got the new adhesive backed sparkle gems, but I don't think they kind of go now although we've got the gold in there mm. but I think I really like the brushed metallic so either the brushed metallic adhesive back dots or the rustic metallic either of those I think would go mm, maybe these ones maybe they would go 
I've got some of those left on this sheet, so let's use those up. Let's use those up. My screen is still frozen over on my computer. <laughs> oh, I love Fee. Fee said, do it. Was that when I was going to snip the top of my pot? I did. I did it. And it turned out good. I was happy with how, how that looks. Um, getting the African vibe, Megan. Ah, oh, awesome. <laughs> Making me want to go and book my trip to Mount Kilimanjaro. Oh, my goodness. That sounds exciting. All right, so let's put one up here. And we might put one down here. We'll put a couple of little ones here and there. That's three. I probably don't need five. I don't think I need five. I think three is enough because there's so much going on on that card. So there we go. There we go. It is done. It is finished. We have made an awesome distressed card. Now, the only other thing I was going to do was to add my fine tip glue pen to the glaze on this card, but then it will take time to dry. So I'll add that. I said I was going to add that last and I shall. I just want to make sure that that's not going to curl up. So I'm just going to get this flowing again. I think this is a bit blocked. I'm going to add the fine tip glue pen to the glaze. And when that dries, that'll be beautiful and glossy. So once that's dry, I'll take a photo of it and you'll see the difference that that makes. So we've got the faux patina on this one. And we've got the faux glaze on this one. So that will look really awesome. It looks great already. And it's not even dry yet. There we go. So patina on this one, faux glaze on this one. We've got the trim on this one. So there we go. There's a few different, a few different effects that you can do with your pots. Got lots of tearing, lots of texture, lots of inking. Just lots and lots of beautiful texture and fun. So there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that one. All right. I'm going to tip the camera back up um, face to face so I can say goodbye to you properly. So bear with me. Cover up the camera as I do my flippity flip so that I don't make you all dizzy. Oh, undo that clamp. That clamp is so tight now. No, it goes the other way, I think. Maybe I'm doing it the wrong way. Oh, it's stuck. <laughs> oh, it's the opposite way now. That's why. I was tightening it instead of loosening it. Wow, lucky I, lucky I covered up my camera because you'd all be super dizzy by now. If I didn't. Back up we go. All right. So we'll do a flip and a flip. There we go. Oops, we're up in the sky. Lights. Yeah, I had to um, change my stand for filming on YouTube because filming live on YouTube is a little bit different. And um, so I had to adjust my stand. And so now it's in a different orientation. So when I film here on my Facebook page, my clamp is on the opposite side and normally you, whichever way you normally twist it clockwise or anti-clockwise, it's now the opposite and I keep forgetting. So I keep twisting it the wrong way. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's why it was taking me a moment just to get that undone. Now, hopefully when I hold this up, that glaze doesn't run down the pot. So I'll hold it up really quickly. You ready? Can you see the glaze? I don't know if you can, don't know if the light is picking it up. Oh, there you go. A little bit shiny there, see? So there you go. So that was a that was a mammoth, a mammoth effort, that one, because it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun for me making it. Um I'm sorry if it got a bit boring watching because it took me quite a while, but I think it turned out really well. I'm very happy with it. Yeah, so there you go. And I'll take photos. All oh, the glaze did it did run just then. Ah! Um so I will take photos once it is dry. So note to self, do not hold your project up if you're, 
if you've got the um, fine tip glue on it and you don't want it to run. <laughs> oh, I hope I haven't ruined my pot now. I might need to dismantle it and make another one. I'll try and push it back up and see if that, see if I can salvage it. <laughs> oh dear. Did you see that on camera? Did you see it run on camera? You probably did. I'm trying to fix it up with a baby wipe right now. So, <laughs> all right, I might have salvaged it. It might be okay. It might be okay. We'll see when it dries. I'm not going to hold it back up now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Gee, we did some trial and error today, didn't we? But it's all good. It's all good. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today. I will let you all go. It is dinner time now for a lot of you, probably past dinner time for some of you. Um, but thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope that you learned some new things today in some of in some of that. And those watching the replay, if you have fast forwarded bits of that, that's totally fine. I get it. It was a long live today, <laughs> but all good. Um, it was lots of fun. So thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you have a great week. I will be live over on my YouTube channel on Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So I hope to see you over there. Um, but as I always say, happy crafting. All right. Bye, everyone.